Hey everyone, it's Eric and welcome to day number two of the seven day print on demand workshop. Um, if you have any questions about the day one video, uh, make sure to leave them in the comments. Also, if you haven't watched the day one video and you're in the Facebook group, make sure to scroll up to the top. It's pinned to the top of this page in the announcements section. If you're on YouTube, make sure to comment below if you have any questions about anything and then go back to my page my YouTube channel, I should say, and watch the other video. This will be a seven day series. So on Monday, October 19th, I'm gonna take all the questions and do a live stream on YouTube and on or and in the Facebook group. So it should be interesting this entire week on you know learning about how to build a brand and how to sell on Etsy and Amazon. So let's get right into the, today's video on how to choose a niche. Um, I'm gonna go through the two different types of strategies so one is the organic strategy selling on Etsy and or Amazon and the other one is selling through your own brand and let's go through the brand first now this is the second time I'm actually recording the video so hopefully I don't leave anything out that I that I messed up in the first time around but basically there's three types of categories of niches that I like to get into and the first one is hobbies so if you just go to Google and type in list of hobbies you're gonna see tons of stuff here related to different types of hobbies and most of these hobbies are going to work well with a print on demand store but not only print on demand they're going to work with other types of pro types of revenue streams like affiliate marketing so if you had a brand around darts and a Facebook page around darts like this list of groups or this list of pages related to darts if you owned one of these, you could actually recommend different products and different dart related accessories and products and that and things like that. And if you sold one of those, you would get a commission from the store you sold it through. So if you sold a dart board through Amazon and it was a $200 dart board, most likely you're gonna make between 10 and $20 on that dart board just by referring people. So that's an another avenue that you could go when you start a brand. But let's talk about print on demand. So if you wanted to do darts, you could create a dart uh, page on Instagram. I like to start with Facebook because it's super cheap and easy to grow from zero to 10,000 followers in like a month if you have a few hundred dollars to invest so that's what I would do now I'm gonna talk about growing your page in another video so I'm not gonna get too into that and I'll talk about naming your page and all that kind of stuff later um, so basically if you wanted to get into a hobby you can just choose one of these before I get into the other two uh, categories of niches that I like to get into I want to talk about the thing that's probably most important when you're choosing a niche is to choose something that you actually enjoy doing so don't get into the photography niche if you don't even like photography or who haven't used a camera before it doesn't make sense for you to put all the time and ener energy it you need to create a business like this if you don't enjoy the actual topic that you're going to be talking about so that's the first rule is to write down um, a list of hobbies that you have write down um, maybe some animals that you enjoy write down some careers that you like if you like any of those things then that's what you want to use as your niche basically whatever you enjoy pick that if you're going the branding route so like I said the the second category is animals so if we just type in list of animals in Google it'll give us a bunch of animals now the key with animals is and the key with with any niche that you choose is to to go deep in the niche the whole riches are in the niches is true but the riches are in the deep niches so if you want to start something on dogs if you want to start a dog brand you might want to start a pug dog brand or a labrador retriever brand you don't want to go strictly you know i love dogs because the conversion rates on your designs and on your products are going to be a little lower just because you're in such a broad niche also the competition is going to be fierce because there's so many people in that niche that you really want to cut down your competition and increase your conversion rates by going super deep in the niche so I hope that makes sense. So if you wanted to do start some sort of reptile brand, you might want to do sea turtles and not just all reptiles. The third category I want to talk about is list of careers. You can type this into Google. It doesn't really show you it at the top, but you can go into um, list of over 12,000 careers right here. So mainly um, you want to stick to careers that are people are passionate about. So engineering, uh, nursing, doctors, scientists, 
you know, art, uh, bakers, bartenders. That's a good one. If, if you wanted to start, if you like bartending and you wanted to start a brand around bartending, that's definitely a good one to get into. Uh, biologists, chemists, child care workers. If you wanted to start uh, a brand around child care, that would be a good one. There's so many good careers out there, nursing, uh, military stuff, um, just police and firemen. I mean, those are the things that come off the top of my head when I think of careers. I'm not in a career at all. I don't have a career brand at all. Um, but this list of 12,000 careers is probably going to help you out. So just go to Google. And if you want to do a career, um, just type that in. And if you have a career that you really love already and you just want a side income, then start talking about the career that you already have. So if you're a nurse, start a nursing brand, start posting stuff on social, start running ads to get uh, to likes to your page, and then start promoting your products on that page. Now, I'll get to all that in a, in a different video, obviously, but... Um, the key thing here when you're when you're talking about choosing a niche is to choose something that you enjoy doing. So that's kind of how I would choose a niche uh, for the branding strategy. If you wanted to create a brand on, on social media and create a website and build an email list, branding is definitely the, the better way to go because it's a more of a long term uh, thing and you own it kind of. You own your email list, you own your website um, that you're going to have down the road. If you create an app, that would be great too. You own the app. Um, basically, you have your customer information. Now, if you sell on Etsy or Amazon, you don't have your customer information. They could take away your store at any time. That's why I always push um, trying to create a brand. But let's get into Etsy and Amazon. So when you're starting a store on Etsy, I think the better way to go here is to try and sell a, a particular product. So you're going to be in a lot of different niches, but you're going to be selling one type of product. And I think a lot of people, when they start out with print on demand, they go straight to t-shirts and that's great. But the competition for t-shirts, I mean, if we just type in, let's just type in funny t-shirt uh, for men. No, let's just type in funny t-shirt and see how many uh, listings there are. So 835,000 results. So that's who you're competing with. If you're trying to rank or trying to sell funny type t-shirts, you're going to be competing with over 830,000 people or other products, I should say. Now, if we type in something like phone case, you're competing with 385,000. Now, I typed in phone case and I should have typed in funny phone case. So let's just type in t-shirt. So t-shirts, people, there's over four point, there's basically 4.3 million t-shirts on Etsy. So that's a ton. So if you if you compare that to the phone case number, there's only 800 or 800, there's only 385,000 results for phone cases versus t-shirts. So you want to keep that in mind when you're starting an Etsy store is to think about not only um, the competition, but what is something unique about your store versus other stores. I hope that makes sense, and I think I said that incorrectly, but basically what I'm trying to say is sell a particular product in your store, and then inside that store, you can have a ton of different niches. So let me go to this. I've used this in a different video, but Frosty Covers, um, they've been on Etsy only a few months um, they've been on Etsy in 20, they started this store in 2020. They have 4,353 sales. Now they have 56 total listings up and that's not a lot, but they do have five or six designs per listing. So they technically have about 250 products, but here's what you can do. You can categorize your niches inside of your store. So if you wanted to sell phone cases, you can sell animal phone cases and they would just click on this and they can look through all the animal phone cases. If you wanted to sell floral design type for phone cases, you can go through and see all the types of designs that um, you have available. So this is how I would set up my Etsy store is you're not going to be choosing a niche because you're going to be in all different types of niches. You want to choose a product that you want to sell. Now, this isn't the only way you can sell on Etsy. This is the way I do it. Now, there is a different way. You can actually sell in a specific niche 
and then have a bunch of different products. So if you wanted to sell floral designs, all right, and your whole store is selling like flower type of products, meaning you're gonna sell canvas art, so you'd have that as a category. You could sell phone cases, you could sell t-shirts and hoodies, you could sell backpacks, shoes, wallets, that type of thing. That's another route to go if you wanted to choose a specific niche. But for me on Etsy, I would rather use one specific product because when you're creating your designs and getting these design ideas and hiring a designer to create them, it's gonna be a lot easier because all you need is one template. So for phone cases, maybe it's a certain size of product and you can say, all right, this is the size of product or design that I need and you can give that to your designer and then once they know that, they can make designs pretty quickly for you. They don't have to go through and you know you don't have to figure out what size you need on a t-shirt and what size you need on a hoodie and what size canvas art you need and, and uh, wallets and, and all that kind of, kind of stuff. So it makes it a lot simpler when you're selling one type of product. So I hope that makes sense when you're trying to choose a niche on Etsy. So with Merch by Amazon, it's, it's really different because you don't need to be in a specific niche at all. And most likely you're gonna be working in tons of different niches, hundreds if not thousands. Because they have such an array of products, they only have clothing, pop sockets, and phone cases. So what I suggest you do when you first start on Merch by Amazon, because you are are limited to the tier level that you that they set actually so when you're when you're on when you're just having your first uploads you're only able to upload 10 uh, once you sell 10 they'll most likely upgrade you to 25 then you'll go to 100 then 500 then you know the thousand mark and once you get into the thousands and the hundreds that's when you're gonna have to worry about getting into different niches so what I recommend when you first start out is just upload pop sockets or phone cases because those are the easiest to make the cheapest to, to design for your designers and it's just really easy to upload when you're uploading with clothing you're gonna have a lot more competition and when you upload just a single design you can put them on all these products at the same time the problem is it counts as one two three four five six seven eight uploads or nine uploads if you're doing the hoodie down here so that takes up nine of your slots what you want to do is be in different niches for either pop sockets or phone cases and slowly work up from there but with merch by Amazon you're gonna be selling in all different niches so it really doesn't matter which one you choose right now so I hope that makes sense with everything with the branding Etsy and merch by Amazon if you have any questions leave a comment below and make sure to subscribe, turn post notifications on, and that will ensure that you will get notified of the next videos in this series. All right, see you later.